This one? acknowledges that we are on the ancestral land of the Coast Salish people, including the Duwamish, the Suquamish, the Stilguamish, and the Muckleshoot people, past and present. We also acknowledge that we are on the historic and current community of Chinatown neighborhood of the CID. We recognize that the steward of Seattle spaces by the Coast Salish people and the CID community, of which we are currently in, and the disruption of this work by colonization. We endeavor to continue this work by opposing systematic oppression and understanding our collective histories as a path to social and environmental justice. I just want to take a pause with that. We can all just let that in. Again, take a moment to share with your neighbor a way in which you are currently learning and working to disrupt the continued impacts of colonialism. Turn and talk. What you doing? What are you thinking about? What you thinking about? What are your students perhaps coming home and teaching you? What you reading?
In addition to taking and teaching classes, applying to colleges and certificate programs, and working and climbing and sailing, these students, well, all seniors in their final year at the SCS, also participate in a year-long senior process. Since 1994, the senior process has become ever more intentional in order to ensure the skills being practiced are adapted to these young people's lives through weekly tech studies, conversations, practicums, and discussions together in seminar. The process leads to two big events, their senior projects showcased tonight, and their credo, the statement of belief, to be read at graduation in June. Raise your hand if you've been impacted by a practicum, a conversation, <laughs> <laughs> or any part of the senior process. Let's see. Have you, have you been impacted personally? <laughs> yes, we thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> the PSCS teaching and admin staff continually collaborate on a consistent, structured, but ever evolving process rooted in our educational philosophy and designed to scaffold deeper understanding of our collective vision. We attempt to co-create a brave space of community-centered education, critical curriculum, student choice, accountability, and intentional collaboration. The senior process builds on the core commitments of PSCS, practice integrity, engage the community, and act with courage. So here's the flow for this evening. Each senior will, will share a five-minute presentation showcasing their senior project and process. Then, you will applaud at that time. Uh, and you can do it any way you want. You can do a big clap. You can do glitter fingers, jazz hands thing. You can like throw your arms up in the air, you know, just show, yeah, Sam Mitchell's doing the back. Show your love. Um, okay, then that senior will introduce and welcome the next senior to the stage. If you have questions, which I'm sure you will, please hold on to them. After the presentations, the senior will be at their the seniors will be at their display station table, ready to answer any and all questions and share more about that work. And I really encourage you all to spend time with these seniors and really learn about the really amazing things that they've done with their year. Um, they've worked really hard. And finally, the bathrooms are this way down the hall, um, and also. Sweet Gavin is filming this, so please don't walk down the center aisle. Thanks, you also Gavin. Hit him, hit him. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and this is the order of presentations. It's going to go Jalen, Aiden, Esther, Ren, Ella, Aiden, Mara. Seated accordingly on the wall. Good job. Seniors, say hi. Hi, seniors. Okay. <clears throat> How about we all have one moment of practice? Will you clap? Will you glitter finger? Or will you? One, two, three. All right, beautiful. All right, everyone. Now, our first presenter. Introducing our joyful, jeweled, and jacked Jalen. My background in climbing 
is I've been coming for five years and I'm a part of the North Face Athlete Development Program and I have a passion for social justice. <laughs> this photo is of me and my fellow athlete development people, which I joined in May of 2022. Yeah. I'm the youngest athlete so far for them. <laughs> It's the app photo of me on the North Face website in my quote. I am making a difference by being an activist in the spaces I occupy. What was my project? My goal was to work with the owners of Seattle Border Project to get more people from diverse backgrounds to climb in Washington by making the cost of entry lower to the gym lower. So, I created the Black Crowning Collective, a space where Black folks can explore the sport of the crowning of each other. <laughs> Screenshot of the Instagram account that I created uh, about four months ago. Um, most of these people live in Seattle, and that's a, probably at least 120 of them live in Seattle. How, my fir how did my first meetup go? It went amazing. I brought food and drinks. And the North Face athlete, Green Leeds, came. And at least 25 to 30 people showed up. That's what it was. It's the Black Climbing Collective. Um, yeah, it was basically, it was $12 for returning guests, and it was free for first timers. <laughs> These are two cool people that I've met, that I've known for the past five years, and Watch each other grow. Okay. This, this last weekend, I tabled at an event called Girl Revolution, which is basically a program uh, ran for five powerful voices, which is an organization that empowers BIPOC youth to achieve their goals and expand their skills. <laughs> when is my second meetup? It's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> Challenges of my project. This, this was me a few hours before I let everybody in. I cried for a while after that, but I eventually got there and the meetup went very successful. Um, yeah. Ch challenges that I dealt with anxiety, procrastination, um, stress, and unmotivation for my project. Because at, at some point I was like, why is my, is my project even needed? But as I went to like the gym more, I saw like I, that was like the only black woman in the space. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty good with this guy. What did I learn? I learned how to write professional emails to adults. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how to be big people even when I'm stressed. Um, how to believe in myself and know what I'm capable of. Um, what's next for me? Mostly meetups. Community potlucks in the summer, um, collaborated with other BIPOC organizations like Trail Mix and Arms of Color. Um, yeah, and also presenting my projects to the North Face. So I can create a BIPOC girls slash women's climbing club. Or we like we go outside <laughs> or something. Um, yeah. Here are all the amazing people that help the process of my project. And here's a picture from the night. Crystal, Marie, and somebody else. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's the end. Well, next time. Yeah.
start, I want to mention what my senior project was going to be. If you don't know me, I really like video games. And since that topic is well known to me, I decided to push myself in a direction I've never gone, and that was to make a magazine. If you don't know magazines, they're professional, velocity, wide range of topics. It was going to have collabs with seniors, specifically Caden and Ren. They both did video game related stuff. That was really super cool, and I was really excited. And then I wasn't. <laughs> uh, so, I changed it to something that I feel I could focus on in a better, more likable attitude. And that all started when I made this monstrosity of a flowchart. It's beautiful, it's my baby. But I made this at the beginning or the end of the first term. I made this in a burst of inspiration after having several discussions throughout the first term with friends, family, about art, and the philosophy. The four main topics that I came up with here were these. Well, it's technically three, the opposite of art is like a side topic, but the things are forms of art, what can be considered art, and the purpose of art. I didn't use all of these topics for the scene, but hopefully in the future, further on, we can make what this looks like. Now, for what my project actually is, this is me about art. Before I get into what my project and how I made it, uh, before I get into that, we're going to talk about what a zine is. A zine is a cultural form of media popularized during the Harlem Renaissance. It was a way for a lot of marginalized groups of people to talk about, to talk and trade about information about political issues and opinions. In modern day, zines can be made by anyone for whatever reason to talk about anything they like. The reason I wanted to mention this, uh, specifically this definition, is because it is very important, and I have to recognize that this form of media is not for people like me, being white men. This is not something that is typically made by my demographic, and I want to recognize that in hopes that you do further research into what these scenes truly came from and the important people that popularized it during this time. Now, the process of making it. The first tool, the first two things are these very important tools that literally carried me through my entire life. That was Canva and Obsidian. I think you can tell which one's which. <laughs> Obsidian for notes, and I made the flowchart. It is a uh, markdown, which is a coding language based note taking thing. That uh, uses files on the computer instead of the internet so you can make it offline. If you have more questions, if you know Michael, talk to him about it. And Canva, <laughs> and Canva is how I assembled the scene into what it is. It's uh, with the help. These are some uh, screenshots of what these programs look like. The first one here on the right, left here. Yeah. That is a screenshot from Canva. It is one of the articles. Don't look at it yet, that's spoilers. The middle piece. Is from Obsidian. It is a list of taking its ideas that is on the uh, my thing up front. You can look at it closer if you want. And the furthest over here, this is a gift of quickly scrolling through the zine. I have physical copies that I printed uh, at the my station. You can look at them. I'll hand them out. Not to keep, but to look at. Some honorable mentions for things I, that were very helpful. The first is my camera. All, you'll notice that there were pictures in the zine. I took all of those, and two of the articles were in my But this camera helped me take those pictures. Um, and the second thing is my mom. <laughs> she helped me assemble the final product in Canva. Um, I literally could not have done this without her. She's right here. <laughs> Three things I learned. There were three very important things that I learned throughout this process, and they all tie together. The first is passion goes way further than stress. I learned this the hard way. Um, at the beginning, when my project was still about zine or er, about magazine, about video games, uh, every time I booted up a video game, every time I thought about video games, my favorite thing. I just felt so stressed. I was it, my thoughts spiraled into I could be working on my senior project right now. And it just did not help my mental. So that is part of why I made the shift. After I did, I felt very passionate about art. And that 
drove me to finish the project. I literally cannot have done it without the passion that I have. The second thing that ties into this is turning a hobby into a job is not fun. <laughs> when I turned video games, my hobby, into a job, my senior project, slash schoolwork, it caused other things. It caused a lot of stress. Um, and after I made that shift, it changed my passion. And the last thing is that zines are really, really fun to make. So fun, like I mentioned earlier, I'm probably going to be making further volumes. And I will definitely keep you guys up to date with that. And I couldn't finish my... Wait. Okay, I couldn't not mention these two amazing people. They <laughs> these two people over there have guided all of the seniors, and specifically me, through this year. They helped us so much. They gave us so much feedback on our presentations, on everything we needed to do, specifically Hannah for being my advisor. Um, and they're just so cool, aren't they? <laughs> And with that, thank you for coming. And now I present to you the excellent and enlightened Esther. Hello, everybody. It's working. Okay, um, so for the past few years, I've been a part of the race team at Corinthian Yacht Club. I practice and race small sailboats, and at this point, I probably spend more time at the marina than I do my own house, so it felt like a good idea to do for my projects to surround sailing. Um, my original plan was to teach myself how to sail a laser, which is a single-handed 14-foot sailboat. I wanted to do this because I noticed that the top sailors in our area all started in lasers, and it seemed like a path that I wanted to take if I wanted to be like them. The problem is, I'm not like them. Most of them began sailing early in life in even smaller boats called Opties, which are eight feet long, and they grew up sailing those, and then they would graduate to sailing lasers. Um, these kids usually came from sailing families, owned their own boats, and had private coaching. I started sailing when I was 14. I don't come from a sailing family, I don't own a boat, and I don't have access to private coaching. The lasers I did have access to through CYC were leaky and did not have the proper rigging. After noticing all of the things I did not have for this project, I decided to focus on the resources I did have, which was a team of excited, committed sailors, a fleet of flying juniors, which are the sailboats I race at practice, and a great team coach, an empowered role, um, I'm co-captain of the varsity race team and also assistant director of the juniors program. Um, so once I began to work with what I did have, I realized I needed to change my goal. New possibilities opened up for me to improve as a sailor and to benefit the program as a whole, so I began feeding my sailing program. Over the winter, I began reworking our practice schedule. I proposed a new schedule that solved multiple issues, including having too many sailors and only one coach. I designed pathways for sailors to learn how to teach each other and be independent from a coach. And once spring season started in March, I began picking up the slack from my coach, organizing teams for regattas, communicating throughout our teams, and pushing to attend regattas and clinics, even when our coach was out of the country. I was able to use my place on the team to teach myself new skills and enter high levels of competition while carrying the team with me, specifically working with the nine amazing super varsity sailors, a team I created to provide a higher level of coaching for those who need it. This is a group of some of the most advanced sailors on the varsity team who have run self-coached practices twice a week and brought their knowledge back to the JV and varsity sailors. These people are some of my closest friends, and I've learned a lot from them, and they bring collaboration and grit to every practice. I've also created an Instagram account for our race team. It's called CYC Juniors Race Team. I post anything from practice footage to us throwing our coaches in the water. <laughs> Everything on the account is posted and written by me. Um, walking away from this project, I've increased my own confidence, knowledge, and sailing abilities. I'm ending the spring season of sailing with strong teams of junior varsity, varsity, and super varsity sailors who have the skills to organize and attend district events themselves. I'm also walking away from this project with skills that will carry on to my future endeavors. I learned to send 
well-formatted, clear emails, how to create a collaborative leadership model in a sports environment, how much pizza it actually takes to feed a bunch of teenagers, <laughs> and how to teach others what I know. My goal for this project shifted a lot throughout the months. Originally, I was hoping to sell a laser to Rogata. My new goal for the past few months has been to create pathways for intense skill building for myself and the team, and to create an atmosphere of support, family, and grit in every part of our junior program. I feel that I've met this goal. And I want to say a huge thank you to Annie, my coach, Elizabeth, my advisor, and my mom and dad for guiding me through this process. And now I'm going to introduce you all to my sailing team. Hopefully this works. Okay, if this does not play, I have this video. It's a very epic video. It's one and a half minutes. It's on my laptop and it'll be on this people. There's a pair of headphones as well, and you can replay it as many times as you like. <laughs> it goes very fast, and there's very funny moments. Um, yeah. Should I move on? Sweet. No, you're all good. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you all so much. Come on to my table, check out this amazing video. Um, and now I want to thank you. from my favorite game, Final Fantasy XIV. So, along the way, I encountered a few challenges. First of all, time management, and by extension, ADHD. <laughs> time management is already hard, and if you have ADHD, you might know that it makes it even harder. So, <laughs> thank you, Harry. I'm glad that you see my struggle. And you, Nat. Thank you, Nat. Um, second of all, cosplays are difficult to make, uh, especially when you don't have a lot of previous sewing and making knowledge. Third, uh, there are a lot of setbacks due to COVID and various other illnesses. I got sick a lot of times this year, uh, not intentionally, of course, but <laughs> it's kind of hard not to get sick sometimes. Uh, originally, 
this project was going to have a lot of 3D printed pieces. However, that didn't happen because my 3D printer broke, uh, which was great. <laughs> and lastly, money. Fabric costs money. Clay costs money. Fake fur, which I needed, costs money. Accessories costs money. It costs a lot of money to make these things. <laughs> Despite that, I managed to overcome these challenges and I made one fully complete cosplay, one that is 80% done, and managed to get done one photo shoot with that done cosplay. <laughs> you can see pieces of the 80% one done uh, that I wear right now. Um, so, I learned a lot of things about myself through this process. Uh, first of all, I learned that I really like sewing. Sewing is a lot of fun. If you don't do sewing, you should do sewing because it's a lot of fun. And I recommend it. Um, I learned that I really hate cutting things out. That's like the second biggest part of sewing. <laughs> and it kind of sucks, I'll be honest. Um, I learned how much time, how much I really enjoy spending time with my friends. Through a lot of this project, I had to take time away from them and from my usual activities to just work and work and work on my project, and I didn't get to talk to them a lot over the past few weeks and months. Um, yeah, it kind of sucked. <laughs> um, I also learned how to make use of what I have, especially considering budget constraints. And I also learned that sometimes my mother is correct. <laughs> pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, I learned more effective budgeting. I learned how to have better time management and learned skills to help me with my ADHD. And I also learned how to ask for help more because that's always been hard for me. And, and yeah, so I want to say a few thank yous. Thank you to all of my friends for being epic and awesome. <laughs> thank you to my mom, Kara, for helping me do this project, because if she didn't, this wouldn't have happened at all. And thank you for my friend, to my friend Jay for giving me the idea for this project on August 24th, uh, 2022, at about 1.32 AM. <laughs> thank you. largely around food and culture. So raise your hand if you've eaten food recently. <laughs> yeah, okay, so all of you can relate to my project, that's great. <laughs> what was my project? Cooking, a lot. My original idea was to make 20 meals and 20 desserts, all from different countries around the world. Uh, this turned out to be a big project because something I didn't realize was that was that making a meal isn't making one dish, it's making like two or four dishes and then putting them all on a plate together. So I struggled with um, that and ended up shortening my amount of work down to 20 meals and or desserts <laughs> from places around the world. I, my original plan was also to visit the restaurants and speak to, um, visit three restaurants and speak to three different chefs 
about their relationship with culture and how it impacts them and their cooking. I didn't get around to this. I was cooking. <laughs> <laughs> An acknowledgement. My intention with this project is to explore different cultures while not minimizing the struggle of certain communities or using their cultures as a means to enhance my high school career. I will research the recipes thoroughly so that I can recreate the dish to the best of my ability and respect and be respectful throughout the process. God, it's weird the oven here for you. Um, <laughs> finding the ingredients. I learned a lot about convenience versus sustainability. Something I struggled with was okay, I could go out to a really sustainable, really nice grocery store way out in the like nowhere, or I could go to Costco and get the same thing, but for a lot cheaper and have it be a lot easier. So figuring out the nuances between convenience and um, when to push myself to explore different cultures was an important part of this project for me. Um, yeah. Also, I'm gluten-free, I have celiac disease, so I had to change a lot of things with my cooking, um, especially with American and European cuisine, because they eat a lot of wheat. <laughs> my cooking. This is me, right there. I have difficulty with onions. <laughs> Um, so my mom bought me special goggles so I couldn't suffer anymore. Um, yeah. Cooking. It involves finding your ingredients, making sure your kitchen is clean. Um, yeah. Finding your recipe, doing all that stuff. It takes time. It takes effort to have a clean kitchen, to have a good workspace, to have a good mindset for the process. It's, yeah, that, that also took some preparation for me that I didn't fully expect. Some of the ways cooking ties to heritage. Yes, this is me. I've been cooking since I was a little kid. Um, yeah, I guess I have bonnets for sprinkles. Um, so family ties in a lot with cooking. A lot of people learn how to cook from their parents and relatives um, or from the people who raise them. Um, so yeah, cooking plays a big role with that. In my family, household staples are a thing. I think that's the thing that a lot of us can relate to. In my family, one of our household staples is coffee. Who can relate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, my family dies without eggs and coffee. I also, um, yeah, so, and you can find a lot more about this kind of thing in my table. And in my project results. So, I... Do not have like a final finished project in the same way that I would have if I like built a boat or something to present you guys with. Uh, but every time I finished one of my meals, that was a part of finishing my process. So it was just continuing finishing my process. But don't worry, guys, I did bake and cook stuff for you guys to try today. So come to my talk. I have snacks. <laughs> What I plan to take from this. I, gosh, you guys are me breathing a lot. It's so weird. Um, yeah, okay, but it's like, I want to, the batteries fell out. Can one of you guys help me while I finish the rest of the things? Um, so I thought through a lot of stuff about eating out in restaurants and the familiarity that I get with things. Often I find myself eating at one or two restaurants because I become comfortable with them. And even when I eat at a restaurant that I'm not comfortable with, I order something I'm comfortable with because it's scary to try new things and I don't know what to expect. Oh, thanks. Um, so, yeah, but I'm trying to explore different cuisines, try different recipes, step outside my comfort zone, try that thing that looks a little odd or I think might, you know, I might not like it. Because I might love it. Who knows? People who help me. Here's my giant list of people who help me. Um, a special thanks to my mom for supporting me through buying stuff for my cooking and cleaning. Um, uh, my Aunt Julie, JJ, my brother, um, my girlfriend, Hannah, for being my advisor. Um, the whole PSCS community, and of course, my lovely seniors for helping me during that entire cleaning process. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, next up on the stage.
page, we have a charismatic, creative cinematographer. Yes, that's hard for the C, Kaden. <laughs> citizens of Earth. My name is Super Kaden, and I would like to present to you the best movie ever. <laughs> it also happens to be my senior project, Super Smash News Movie Edition. Now, the beginning of Super Smash Kings was in the school newspaper class in eighth grade, I was in charge of doing the comic section, so I thought I'd do like a superhero comic, and I called it Super Kaden. <laughs> I thought, well, that might make it seem like a little fool myself or something. But then I thought, well, I'll lean into it and make it like goofy. So I made the bad guy, someone else at the school, <laughs> the evil mastermind. Yeah. And then, uh, at the end, I advertised my game, Super Smash Kids, and say, if you play, you can get superpowers like me. So, yeah, that's where it started. Now, before we continue, I'd like to say that with this movie and um, all of the Super Smash Kids media, all the names, you know, all the real people, I've to use names. <laughs> oh. Sorry, actually, the story, all the characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. No identification with actual persons, live or deceased, places, buildings, and products is intended or should be inferred. <laughs> started by making the script. Um, it turned out to be 18 pages in all. I think I added a bit to it. So it was like 20 pages at the end. Oh, here. Yeah, and there's a picture of part of the script. Um, this wasn't the hardest part of my movie to make. This was actually relatively easy compared to other stuff, so that's good. Um, I then went on to make the soundtrack. I did this in uh, digital audio editor soundtrack. Um, yeah. And here's the. I used all my own original music and some songs I had previously made that's also original. So I would put some of those. Um, but yeah, here's one of my projects in soundtrack. It's Super Smash Kids movie villain theme. Um, yeah. This place several times throughout the week. Um, but now to get to the main part of my project, I offered a class for the winter and spring terms at PSCS where people could come and act in the best movie ever. Um, so, yeah, during the filming process, here were some of the key elements. First up, of course, camera. Um, we started off by using Wyatt was nice enough to bring in a uh, video camera he had and an audio recorder. We used that for a bit, but uh, whenever Wyatt wasn't there, we couldn't use it. So we ended up <laughs> uh, we ended up switching to phone cameras so we could like you know, switch as long as they had, the phone had the same camera, we could switch. Um, yeah. Also, green screens were, a, well, a green screen. I put up a green screen in a room at PSCS, and we used that for the movie. A lot of the movie scenes actually take place at PSCS, but for the one, I made 3D modeled backgrounds, which I overlaid. And, uh, there's a picture of one. This is, um, Angel of an Evil Masterminds, Secret Lair. 
<laughs> and this is, I enabled like this recorder thing that we used to record it, uh, which is there. Um, and now, next up, editing software. For editing software, I used iMovie. Um, and that worked pretty well. There are some weird things I had to deal with, but I figured out how to get around them. So, yeah. Um, and costumes and props. We needed a lot of costumes and props. And that brings me to challenges. Um, if I had to do this project over again, I would definitely start finding and making the costumes and props earlier. Because this time, I had some of them ready, but for some, I kind of just waited until we needed them. And then I didn't really have much time to find them. And we got everything we needed in the end, but um, it added stress that I would rather not have. And it was hard finding enough time to record scenes because even though we had two terms, we had to set up, we had to like do different takes until we got it right, we had to get ready for the next class. And there's a lot to record, so it was hard to fit it all in. It was hard to find times outside of class to do it. But we did manage to do it. We got the last scene in two days ago, so it was definitely down to the wire. And now, without further ado, get ready for Super Smash Games Movie Edition, the official trailer, or Super Smash Games Trailer Edition. <laughs> Movie Company presents the best movie ever. Let's welcome our new student, Aiden Jarani, the evil mastermind. It's Get ready to take one of the battle between the forces of good and evil. This is in order to build something to destroy the White House. There's two ways to game of the planet. Starting to deal with your ass, I hope you're ready to see that you want to one You call that an army? You mean worthless, bumbling, co-op party? Finally, we have 
by the magical, marvelous, magnificent Mara. Yeah. relaxing 
due to the fact that they, they could see the room was surrounded by windows and they could see everything going on. So in some cases, we had to close the blinds and play music. But all the dogs benefited from the human company. On the enrichment side, the high, the biggest hits was Nubble Max and Snubble Ball. But no project is complete without future plans. The idea would be to possibly make it permanent and keep the space going beyond this project and expand it to our feline friends. They need to relax too, as well as a place to meet and greet with potential adopters. Currently, potential adopters meet with dogs in the yard. The problem with that is that the, the dogs can be overstimulated due to the amount of other people, other dogs, and smells there are. We suspect that if they're more relaxed in the room, they could focus better on their adopters and have a higher chance of getting adopted. We work with, we did this with Doug and he was way more relaxed and showed his best side and was, and was, sorry. And he was, got adopted right away. Experience, but it did come along with its challenges. Thank you so much to my extremely supportive team, both at Seattle Humane and at PFES. I had some amazing, I worked with some lovely dogs, and I got my first my first job. I'm a perfect dog designer. Some things I also learned about my dogs are that they overthink things big time. And sometimes I get overwhelmed and I need to learn when to ask for help. I also had some challenges. The biggest ones included time management and balancing school and humane. There are times where I was literally bouncing back between the two. Also, coordinating schedules was way more difficult than I expected. Because I had to coordinate between my own PSES schedule, my volunteer schedule, and four other schedules across departments. It was the first volunteer project of its kind, so there was a lot to learn. As well as emotional attachment to dogs, I would be really happy to see the dogs go home, but yet I would miss them from time to time because I would play, I miss seeing them around. Here, I, let me tell you a tale of success. <laughs> Little Bone is a beautiful six-year-old husky. She was adopted and returned one day later due to scaring the other dog in the home and for her reactivity. She, the kennel stressed her out because there's so many other dogs around. Our space gave Luna Moon the, the chance to relax away from other dogs and be around people. For her, we had to close the blinds and, and use music. She responded very well to the space and was adopted soon after. These are photos in her current home and I would love to read you some words from her adopter. Luna Moon is doing very well. She is very sweet with lots of cuddles for all and anyone who visits. <laughs> I would like to give a special thanks to all these following people, and of course dogs. I could not have done it without you, and thank you for your infinite support.
Sit back down, Dave. Sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Wow, that was incredible. All right. So, oh. <laughs> everyone take a nice deep breath. <sighs> we watched a lot of beautiful things, a lot of powerful things. Um, I just want to say, off script, we are so delighted with these young people. It has been a dream to work with each one of them. Um, and we want to extend further gratitude to lots of people. So before we move on to their displays, um, which we really, really want you all to visit and take a look at, listen to, ask questions, etc. We want to give gratitude to all of the people that made this happen, which is so many people. Um, first, to our collaborative staff, Hannah. And Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of things. Actually, we all want to do it Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so, you can all have so us. Yeah. So we. There you go. Sam Williams over here. Val or Valerie, back there. Uh, Sam Mitchell, back there. Uh, Siglana, back there. All right. Brandon, right there. Mm -hmm. Michael, here's here. Here's here. <laughs> ah, um, to our supportive board of trustees, to all the other students. Hi, students. <laughs> Hi. To each senior's advisor and the parents and family of all of our students and all of our school, but especially to the parents and families of our seniors. Paul, April, and David, Karen and Sam. Kara, Dee and Chris, Emily and Scott, Veronica and Christian. Um, and I also just want to give a big thank you. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, it's just <laughs> and a really big thank you to you, everyone in the crowd. Look next to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are all here tonight. Thank you for joining us in person. Thank you for those online. I think there's 10 of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us. We cannot wait to see you at graduation, which is coming up at the big finale, which is, anyone know what day it is? June 10th. June 10th. All right, so let's see you then. Um, and now, as our seniors make their way to their display station, display station. <laughs> We want to rise, seniors, and we're going to send them off with an energetic warmth and love and sweetness, and it's going to look like this. Classic. Classic. And See you there. See you there. Thanks, all, and that's it. A roaring applause one more time. Yeah. and our observant eyes at these seniors' presentations. Let's all stretch. <laughs> Hands in the air. Higher. Everyone go to the right. Everyone go to the left. And like we do at school, high five both people next to you. Good job, everybody. You did it. There is Grubby, grub, 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 grub. There's food, there's stuff to see and do. And drink. And people that just sparkle waters. Okay. Bye. Get to Bye. it. Get to it.
Thank <laughs> you. 